Okay, I can't move on unless I talk about this floating anomaly we call emergency food because if Vistaroth is the god of time and speculations say that the god of time is Paimon and Ekonomiya was helped by Easteroth, which is the god of time, then Easteroth going to help Ekonomiya while the primordial one and the shades were fighting would explain why we fished Paimon from the water. But if so, then why is she so small and why does she have no memory? Unless... Oh no. Paimon! But if Paimon is the god of time and was busy helping Ankanamiya, then who the frick is- Outlanders! Your journey ends here! Who are you? The sustainer of heavenly principles! The irrigation of mankind ends now! And what the heck is she doing fighting outlanders of all things? I mean, we don't even know what the heavenly principles are. So, what the heck is happening? <clears throat> okay, Paimon could really be the god of time after all. And of all the things that made me realize, it was when we fished Paimon out of the water in the beginning of the game. And the only thing on my mind was that if Paimon was the god of time, and that if she was in Enkanamiya, while the battle with the second one and the primordial one was going on, then who the heck is the sustainer? But before we go into that, let's talk about why Paimon really is the god of time. But before we can even go into Paimon, I mean Paimon's lore, we have to talk about Goba. <laughs> Now I know this sounds out of field but listen, basically if you remember the quest about Goba, he was known as the god named Mark March Mark Marchiosus Marcosius, the god who helped Liwei. In the story, terrible tragedies came upon Liwei like the war and the cataclysm and so on. So to help the citizens, Marcosius had to split itself into smaller forms. So much that Mar Ugh, Marcosius, oh my gosh, his name. So much that Marcosius lost his power and even all his memory in the process. Now, back to Paimon, I speculate that she did the same thing. Keep in mind that Easteroth, the god of time, was the one helping the Enkanamians while the primordial one and the second one were fighting. Both the Helios and the Sin Shades were the result of Easteroth helping the Enkanamians. So I suspect that Easteroth used quite a lot of power to help Abaraku build the Helios. And once the primordial one, quote unquote theoretically, lost to the second one, Easteroth had to preserve the records and the knowledge of the primordial one by creating the Sin Shades with more pieces of her spiritual self. This in turn could have depleted the remainder of Easteroth's power. And then Easteroth also loses her memory similar to Marcosius. And just like Marcosius became Goba, Easteroth now became Paimon. Having said all this, even though it's just a theory, a new question would now arise. Who is the sustainer of the heavenly principles? If we thought that it was Paimon and it no longer was, then who the heck is she? And why is she taking the power of outlanders as well as being a god that we have no clue about who sustains what she calls the heavenly principles? Before making this video, I thought of the old theory that Paimon and the sustainer are the same person. But now that Paimon could be more akin to a separate god, I thought that maybe they were sisters or siblings. Like, the Sustainer was a Shade, and Paimon was also one of the Shades, and that they both came from Fanes, the primordial one. But the problem here is that the Sustainer and Paimon look nothing alike. Think about it. If Marcosius made duplicates of himself, and the primordial one made Shades of itself, then technically and theoretically at least, Paimon and the Sustainer should look the same. Think of quadruplet siblings who all look the same, right? We already have theories where Paimon was the Sustainer and Paimon was the god of time and that the Sustainer is the unknown god back then. But now, after reading up Enkanomiya lore and focusing on world lore instead of Archon lore, they are pretty much nothing alike. Apart from, well, hair color. If you don't believe me, here are two photos of Paimon Paimon and the Sustainer. Firstly, Paimon and the Sustainer have different eyes. Paimon's eyes are dark with a glint of white in the middle, which if you look close enough, you'll be able to see what looks like stars in the night sky. The Sustainer's eyes in comparison are greatly different in both color and design, being three gold rings with some black streaks on the side, which if we're talking about eyes, should be the de facto feature to tell if someone is the same person. If you made a clone of yourself, for what reason? would you have different eyes, right? Unless you're, I don't know, Omni-Man or something. 
Second is the Triketra. I said that so many times. It is found on Paimon. Can't be seen anywhere on the sustainer. The one symbol that she has, which is this mark on her chest here, can't be found on Paimon either. This long diamond motif is a little bit similar to Dane's leaf, which you can theorize on your own, but I won't discuss right now. Third is that Paimon has these things called celestial motifs found on her person, which isn't on the sustainer either. The sustainer was barefoot with threads on her legs too, compared to Paimon wearing boots and sleeves that both have celestial motifs. Heck, even the color schemes of the two are totally different. Paimon's design is very curved in nature because of the celestial motifs along with her sleeves and puffy clothing. The colors that you see on her are white with bluish wings with the cape having these star lines making short constellations. As well as these motifs that are uh, pink, beige, and I don't know, this color. The sustainer on the other hand is orangish, black and red with feathers and bandages. No shoes either. And last but not least, boxes. Freaking boxes. One final thing to note is that Paimon has a crown, which if you can remember, the primordial one had a crown and wings. And basically the primordial one made clones of itself four times. So imagine four Paimons with one big Paimon as the primordial one. So the crown on Paimon is not seen on the sustainer either. The only thing that was used on sustainer to relate to Paimon is this damn four-pointed star. Which uh, pissed me off at first because one single feature doesn't summarize the entire relation of a single being. I don't know if this was a meme when the game was released, so whatever. But now that more information has been released, especially on Enkanamiya and its interactions with Kanria, as well as the lore dumps about Fanes and Easteroth, we can kind of start to cut out nuances and crackpot relationship plot holes in the game. I'll go on a little tangent here because I want to talk about the four-pointed star and why it's on almost every video. First is Paimon, the Sustainer, and the Traveler, which if you could put them together, they're pretty much gods or something, right? Or outlanders. Then we have the unknown variables, being Dainsleaf, Albedo, Kaya, the treasure hoarders for some reason, and basically anyone else with a four-pointed star. Okay, don't get mad at me, I'm gonna explain. What I think is that the four-pointed star is a symbol of something divine, but it is not specific to any particular one divine being or item. Hence the stars on everything that I mentioned. Humans having four-pointed stars on either their logos or emblems, on their clothes, are a bit of a problem depending on the specific human in question. Albedo being technically made through alchemy, as well as Gold herself having her own reasons why Albedo had that motif. So far we can theorize but no tangible reason yet. Kaya and Dainsleaf having the same star pointed eyes, as well as multiple stars on their clothes, is worth pinning for later lore dumps. I also won't argue with the third sibling thing with Dainsleaf and the Traveler, and also with Kaya and the Canria theories as well as their relation to Kanria as a whole. Okay, I'm not saying that your theory is wrong, but I'm just withholding what I think until more info comes in. Now as for the treasure hoarders, and basically everyone else with a four-pointed star, you can see why I don't want to relate motifs or logos and emblems too much. So this is what I mean by symbolizing something divine. Humans could just symbolize it as something valuable or something priceless or maybe a relation to the gods. Just like when hilly churls use the number one being related to a symbol of gods. Right? Right? Get what I mean here? Okay? But for the treasure hoarder's logo, I think it's basically something shiny or worth some cash. And the bird is probably a magpie instead of a raven because of the stereotype that magpies steal shiny trinkets. Again, you can see many four-point stars on multiple characters which I don't want to discuss. So again, back to Paimon and the sustainer. Whew, jeez, are you keeping up? Or do you want Paimon to rewind the video for you? Traveler. Did you call for me? No, Paimon, I, I didn't. I was talking to someone else. But there's nobody in this room except you. Uh, whatever, just go away for now. I'm almost done. Whatever. So, Paimon and the Sustainer basically have nothing in common in my eyes. All that said, this leads me to further add up on my previous 
theory that the second one really did win the battle of the heavenly thrones, and that the second one and its lackeys usurped the throne. This photo of Venti and Vanessa almost talking about the gods of Celestia in the Genshin manga clearly shows that Celestia has more than one god slash being. Add to that the color of the shot and the vibe that Venti gives off as he tries to change the subject. Similar to what he does with the traveler, Zhong Li and A also try to avoid that topic for some reason or another. This leads me to, again, the theory that Celestia is a lie that the second one created to keep humanity on a leash, and that they've put up the so-called heavenly principles as a failsafe that can incur the wrath of gods. Vindagner and Kanria were a result of that, and the individual effect of the heavenly principles so-called erosion are very similar to the way vision holders lose their visions. You know, they go crazy, they lose their memory, right? All of those happened to Azdaha, to the Kanrians, to Vindagner if there's still people left, and basically to every being in Teyvat, which includes gods. I'll explain the heavenly principles in a later video once I get a full grasp on it, but for now, that's basically my theory on who Paimon could be, as well as who the sustainer is, and how it affects the overall story of Genshin as a whole. So I hope you guys understood my point of view, and do comment below on what you guys think of my theory. How crazy is my theory, or if you've thought of something similar, or is this the best theory, or maybe you even have a better one than I did here. Of course, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my ramblings and click on that bell icon to keep up to whatever I post on my channel. That's gonna be it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Bye!